efficiency and improving the filter insertion rate. So first I want to, I, I will go to talk why we are here, why we talk about that. Um, work that has been done and what we are, the next step we think we need to be done. Uh, I'll go a little bit describe how is the TC handle uh, lookup flow, the, prob the, the problem and the progress so far, uh, flow of TC filter uh, request, talk again also about the RTN RTN lock, and uh, two suggestions on how to to improve the performance and how to execute the accumulating work. So why do you need um, a high insertion rate? So SDN is asking to rapidly uh, upgrade uh, the rules. Um, this is a growing number. In the beginning, we thought it was a few thousands, but now we understand that it's not two thousands, it's more than one million updates per second, especially when you talk about flows. So flows can be a million of flows. You want to update them in a, in a second. You don't want that to take a lot of time. And why TC? Because TC we use currently by, uh, that's the way we do the obvious offload. So uh, when we start working with uh, OpenVis, which uh, and we offload it to TC, uh, we try to do some measure measurement, and we understand that TC is not scaling well. And we're trying to push a table of a million rules, and the engineer that did the testing went home. It didn't finish yet. It took a few hours. Um, so we understand we have a problem. And we did some work, and now we have can have about uh, 50 Ks rules per second. And despite uh, recent improvement, we still want to to get to a higher number. That's what customers are talking now right now, talking about a million per second, million updates per second. Uh, of course, to achieve uh, this number. We need to do something big and not something, just not small improvements. So I want to, ha to, to talk about how is uh, TC handle lookup in the, um, in the kernel. So there is a TC flow. In the TC flow, there a search for the device. It's a linear t uh, search, a lookup for a specific U disk, um, find the class. And uh, that's attached to the QP, uh, to the Q disk. Uh, find the classifier, and inside the classifier, you do a lookup to for the for the handle with a classifier uh, get. So this is a, a method that search in a linear search in a linear search. Uh, then you set the action with the uh, a change. So that's how it's work. Um, okay, so the problem is that uh, inside the classifier, the lookup uh, rule hand handle uh, the classifier, the classifier get method, uh, is doing a linear search. And when you're trying to do a linear search with a mal one million f entry, it's like an O of uh, one million, so it's a lot of time. And also the set actions, was implemented with a, with a hash, that is a good start, but the problem that is a hash with a buckets and the hash size was 16. So again, it's kind of a linear search. So we try to do, to think what to do. Uh, if to, in the beginning, we want to use a, a, ha a big hash and we understand that we will have um, issue with the memory performance that will require in advance a lot of memory. And so then we, we decided to use IDR. Um, we did request IDR64, that wasn't in the kernel, now it is. So those patches are 
in the, in the kernel. And as I said uh, before, uh, now we can reach about uh, 50K rules per second. Of course, depends on the processor. It could be even uh, 100K uh, rules update per second. So this give a, a boost of performance. So now if instead of uh, waiting a few hours to fulfill uh, 1 million rules, you can take it in uh, less than uh, less than 10, uh, 10 seconds. So it's improved, but we still want to, to make it f faster. OK, so I, I will start describe a little bit higher level, because every TC filter is coming from Netlink. So it started about a Netlink layer. Then it's called to the RTNL. Uh, to the RT Netlink, sorry. Let's accept the message. Of course, lock the RTNL lock and uh, send it to TC. In the TC layer, it's used the classifier and we hope that it also go to the hardware. That's an optional. But the performance that I show before, they are software only. It's mean skip, uh, skip hardware. So it's not involved the the time that it takes the, the hardware to process those uh, rules. So as Florian, probably you saw his uh, lecture yesterday. So the best way to to resolve that is to reduce the the problem. Okay, so the problem is the lock is the RTNA lock. That's you you need to lock on every RT, uh, RTNL, so it's mean that you can't do, uh, you, you can't use many threads in order to use, to um, to have multiple insertions from different threads and increase the performance. So the best way to solve it, if, it we, if we can not, if we don't need to use RTNL lock, that's the best way to do that, but it's kind of, it's currently very hard to to resolve this issue. So, uh, as I said before, user process uh, send multiple TC uh, filter request in a parallel, but the RTNA lock is blocking us from doing it in parallel. So, um, w what we are suggesting. So breaking the lock, that's what I said before. So as I mentioned, it, it's difficult, a difficult task. Uh, Florian started to do the job, but looked like it's take a lot of time. And it's a hard work. And um, the other option is that we're suggesting is to, do the, to, use the, uh, the, to do a multi-thread under the lock. So you, you take the RTNA lock, you batch a lot of uh, rule uh, f filters that you want to, to add, and then you use um, um, multi-thread uh, below the lock. So then you can increase the performance. So we have two suggestions how to implement that. Uh, the Suggestion A is to use multiply, multiply uh, netlink messages. And suggestion B is to compound a netlink message. Uh, of course, the, the issues for both of them is the parallel processing implies all actions must be, uh, must, uh, mustn't, must not have uh, dependencies between them. Because if we want to do the in parallel them, we can't. We, we don't want to try to enforce the, um, the dependencies between them. And the parallel processing force kernel to run multi-thread. So the user starts from a single thread, and then we are processing it in a few different uh, cores. It is, we're not sure this is something nice, but that's the only way to, to solve this issue. So the first suggestion that we thought about is uh, to extend the, net field, the Netlink messages 
with a beginning and end, then you can understand that this is the beginning of, uh, uh, of um, a, a, a block of, uh, of messages and the end. Then you can understand that now you can go to process them. So, uh, so accumulating the message, what we're doing, we accumulate the message list uh, to maintain per user. So because if it's from, from the kernel's perspective, you get uh, the rules one by one. It could be that two processes writing to you at the same time. You need to understand and have uh, to maintain a list for each, uh, for each, pro uh, each process ID. It's because you can have multiple processes that's writing you in the same time. And so when you get the end, then you can process them directly on a single, on few queues, uh, a few uh, cores. Um, the other suggestion is to use another uh, a compound netlink message to do a batching. Uh, so the idea is to um, to encapsulate a message with uh, a multiple TC filter request. So it's a single message that can have a lot of uh, filters that you want to process in a in single in in a batch. Um, the fetching work can be by sending all messages to the to the existing TC layer in parallel at once. And as you can see, the idea is to have another a, a new um, a TC message batch header. And in the Netlink message, will be like today. So in today, you have a net uh, NL message header, and then a TC message header, and then the attributes. So in the batching, we will have another batching header in each in front of every. Uh, a TC message and uh, attributes. And of course, the last one will be an uh, attribute of zero size, so we understand this is the last one. So the way we, we, we want to accumulate the work to execute it, in, it's in, in a work queue. So it's not mean all the time that we're going to use multi-cores, multi but we at least have multi-processing that can be benefit, we can benefit, and the performance may for sure will be better. And so at the on the first uh, met uh, the first two A the the first the multiply network message multiply network messages with the begin with the end, uh, a result return per netlink message. So it's also a kind of overhead uh, because in the other suggestion, we can use um, a single success for every, if all of the, all of the rules success, that's what we would like to have. So there will be a single success uh, message. So also result, Illuminate this overhead. Uh, so we did some uh, comp comparison, uh, confirmation between those uh, two suggestions. So, uh, as you can see, the second one is a much more efficient. So the performance will be better. But the first one is more is more generic. So. So we have some debates, and I think the reason that we're aiming to go to one million look like we don't have any any other options, and to go for the second option to two B. That's the only one that will deliver the the required performance. Questions, or what you what you think is the best Any questions? Suggestion? Well, I have some questions. Sure. Can you put back your <laughs> anybody else with questions? Okay. Uh, 
Uh, Ronnie, thanks. Um, I think some some of the stuff you you you've been talking about for netting the the begin and end flags and so on could be in interesting if in case that TC wants to support the two phase commit protocol. But um, um, I think I think there is all all the infrastructure is in place already to do the batching. So basically, what you have to do is that you have to take a big buffer and you you, you have to start. Uh, placing uh, the netlink messages one after another, and then it want, once that buffer gets full, you get another buffer and you keep adding messages there. And then you you send message and you just pass all those buffers via IOVECT, and all that is going to be handled as a he as a, as a single batch. So you are going to save all the Cisco interactions that is actually what is slowing down the entire thing. Um, and I think it's going to be something. It's going to be close to the, to to what you need for your requirements. I, th I remember in NetDev, um, in the first NetDev that happened in Canada, um, I think Akamai people were reporting something like one million um, messages, um, basically to add elements to, to NFT table sets. And following this approach, I'm telling you, it, they were basically close to one second, something like that. So I think, I think, with with infrastructure in place and some changes in user space, it should be it should be good enough. Unless you want to add two phase commit protocol to TCC where all these ideas could be very useful. So currently we're not looking on a two phase commit. But uh, again I think the, the problem that we're facing right now that's the TC insertion itself take time. And we we're trying to do all the optimization there and we're still struggling to go to the 100k rules update per second. So we don't, w the only way to do that, I think it's to have multi core, to have multi uh, processing that's, th that's, uh, unless we will find, you know, to, to optimize it by 10. So this is, you know, it's, a, it's a not an easy task to do because we already did the first uh, optimization. Okay. Uh, so using multiple uh, process core won't help if they all contain on the RTNL lock anyway. So, are you sure of that? Because that, that's the reason we do it in under the lock. We batch them. We get a batch, and the ba we take each class, uh, each filter b under the batch, and process them in parallel on different cores. I don't see how it can work. So uh, one thing that I think is important to recognize and it uh, could help you wrap your head around this problem in a different way perhaps is that usually when you're loading a million entries in, into any kind of thing like a fib table or the TC classifier, they're related in some way. Like it's a, it's a range of addresses from X to Y or there's right. some pattern in, in the entries in, in some way and if you could describe that relationship amongst the entries, you could compress the representation of the message that you send down into the kernel and then expand the entries as, as they get created. And I think you should really think seriously about that. So w we thought about it, but w we don't want to limit the, the batching only to support like a single net device or a single, this, a single net device, a single queue disk because the, and uh, on a single priority. Most of the rules probably you push to the same table, to the same Q, to the same uh, priority in a queue disk. But then we are limiting the batching to be very, very specific. Hi. So just to expand on what Dave said, uh, basically representing a lot of rules is, that's wildcards, right? So. Typically in the offload case, we think about devices that can offload wildcards, but I, TC already has the notion of representing a lot of rules in a, in a compressed way, which is a wildcard representation. So yeah, you so could so implement- we're talking about rules that could be wildcard. So you, you so could implement in the, uh, so, so sort of um, implement wildcard by offloading all the rules, all the microflows, right? All the simple uh, rules, but that way you could uh, send a single command, right? Batch the command by the um, 
wildcard representation and implement them all under the lock. So, so the problem that they are not wildcard. If they were wildcard, it once it was a single rule. Right. So, so we're talking about exact match on five tuples. Typically. So it's not a wild card. Oh, I understand, but uh, wild card is the, uh, this is like an answer to Dave, right? The the way to to represent a lot of rules together. If they do have a relationship, that's wild card. I, if you're talking no, about but, uh, a million random rules, then the wild card does not apply. No, but what Dave said that if you have one million IP addresses, so it's not a wild card. It's not a range, but they're still on the same table, so they have the the same mask. But they are still, you can group them together. You don't need to have the mask. You don't need, there are other things that can be compressed, not the rule itself, not the match. Arupa, did you want to say something? Oh. Oh. Okay. So I'm just going to build up maybe on uh, Pablo's point. So Pablo says we can already do batching if you have multiple net -like messages. Right. Uh, is that not applicable to you? Because you send one big send message, but it has 50, it has a thousand Netlink me messages, each with a header. Yes, but, but for each of them, you need to take the RTNL lock. No, no, you take one RTNL lock. You do a send message, grab the RTNL lock, and you can send a thousand TC commands from the RT Netlink space. Right, that's one. The other one is, uh, can you go back to your diagram where you're showing all these multiple threads? The, the way you're showing the worker threads and next one, yeah. yeah. So you're assuming all these CPUs are going to be accessing some hardware or w what are these things? So doing? first we're talking right now software only. This is software only. So they're just yeah. updating and they're going to hold some content. Obviously, if you're holding something that's uh, like a... The, the, we'll update the IDR. Some lock, right? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be competing. What is the bottleneck in this case? The memory. Okay, so it is. But, but okay, and uh, you you need to have a small lock, but and a, is, is, is kind a of a spin lock and not kind of to lock all the process. So the only way this would work well is everything. There's totally no dependency at all, right? Is that correct? Right. Because uh, I'm not sure. Is there was there a possibility of reordering based on how it was sent from user space? That doesn't matter, maybe. Yeah. So that that's the reason that we said all the batch need to be without any. There's no dependency. No dependency, right? Okay. Um, Okay. Anybody else with a question? So it's nice that you have a way of, of, or an application that has no dependencies between the pieces, but in order to make this a little more generic, which was part of your suggestion A, suggestion B problem, it, can you find a way to put a, some sort of flagging in this general facility that you want to add? that says these are all independent or that we need to do here's your batch and you know set up the set up the lock but each one of these needs to be done individually instead of multiprocessing them so if they are not uh, in you can't process them if you need to process them independently so if they need to make an order between them so you can't use uh, work use and distribute them on different cores so you, you, you won't gain what I'm trying to, to push. So this is the default attribute for batching. So because I, I don't see how it's help if, he, if you're trying to batch and, and tell us that we can be paralyzed. Okay, uh, Ronnie loves beer. You'll find him at the happy hour today. Come and talk to him. Okay. We're going to wrap it up here. Let's give him a warm applause, please. Thanks. Thank you.